Thanks for tuning in for another review from the 2023 EMTB Shootout presented by Fox Racing and Schwalbe Tires. Today, we're gonna to be reviewing the Pivot Shuttle LT. We have the Team XTR build and uh, we're gonna get into some of the pros, cons, and who we think the ideal rider for this bike might be. So the Shuttle LT is a 160, 170, 29 inch wheeled E Enduro mountain bike with a Shimano drive unit and a 756 watt hour Darfon battery. Um, it is mullet compatible if you switch the geo chip into the high position. However, we have been enjoying the bike so much in the 29 inch wheeled platform that we haven't really uh, taken the time to make that switch. I think it's a great application and we've, we've been very happy. Um, one thing to note is that the Pivot Shuttle has a very close size range um, with not huge increments between the sizing. And so that left many of our testers in between. So we have a large and a medium of this bike. You might have seen that video, which we will link to here about the should we size up or size down dilemma. And uh, hopefully that'll answer any more questions. But uh, Robert, obviously at six foot two, enjoyed the size large. All of our other testers from 6'1 down to about 5'10 preferred the medium. However, there were some drawbacks, yep. which we'll get into soon. So before we talk on ride characteristics and impressions, uh, Robert's gonna run us through the geo on the size large. Yeah, so uh, we ran the bike in the high position for the most part. Um, we did experiment with the low position, which definitely gave a little bit more stability, uh, but it's plenty stable in the high, I think. So uh, we were happy with that. Uh, on the size large, we've got a 64 and a half degree head tube angle, 77 and a half degree effective seat tube angle, 439 mil chain stays, a 491 millimeter reach and a 649 millimeter stack. And then in that high position, I think there's 17 millimeters of bottom bracket drop. Correct. Yeah, all purposeful numbers for sure. Um, and I think I'll just chime in real quick for a couple of things for comparison's sake. 491 reach on the large, 471 on the medium. Um, also the chainstay length is the same across the board, but wheelbase overall goes from 1245 on the medium to 1281 on the large. So uh, quite a big jump, I mean, both in reach and in the overall wheelbase. And uh, we'll get into that on the ride characteristics. <laughs> So with the geometry out of the way, let's talk a little bit about the value discussion and build on the pivots. Um, Frenchie, you're a working man with two babies at home. What Whew. do you think about pivots as a whole and this bike in particular? Uh, I think it's a, it's a great bike. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's $11,999. But, I, but, I, but uh, my wife would be pretty upset um, <laughs> if I came home with an $11,000 bike. I wouldn't. Tell her. $12,000. You're getting full factory Kashima. Shimano XTR, nice wheel set. But not a XTR particularly shifter. expensive wheel set. Okay, okay. XTR shifter. Okay. Value compared to other bikes in the shootout. I mean, it is a pivot and I, I think it's important. I'm not, I'm not making excuses at all. I think it's important to consider how a bike performs, the engineering, the design, the performance also has to go into the price tag more than just what parts are bolted to it. Definitely. Um, Cause yeah, you could have an $8,000 bike with full XTR and Kashima, but it might ride like crap. Which this does not. Right, and I'm not saying 12,000 is something I would spend on it, but what are your thoughts? Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's other bikes that have it's, pretty good builds that cost a lot less here. This is probably the nicest component spec aside from maybe the wheels that we've got on test. Mm -hmm. um, certainly it's all, you know, XTR, carbon bar, full factory suspension, it's good stuff, um, but it's, it's pivot money, you know? Right. Uh, they are, have, have always been expensive. Mm -hmm. The finish on the frame is incredible, I would say. Okay. Um, it looks like a very high quality product. Yep. Um, so, I mean, I don't think it'll matter to your typical pivot customer okay. that it is 12,000 pounds, I think, or dollars. I think that is what 
okay. what it was always going to cost. Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. Let's move into the performance and how the thing rides out on the trail. Uh, let's lead off first climbing, general trail riding, and how this bike feels, Frenchie. So at six foot, I rode the medium. Um, instantly comfortable climbing up, very, very quick, very active rear end, supple off the top, just like I like it, um, and just very nimble. Um, felt great, instantly comfortable. Um, and then going downhill was pretty rad. Um, you know, you have this, the typical stereotypic uh, characteristics with a medium. And I noticed the medium uh, lost stability at high speed, um, chattery um, uh, bumps. And that you think was reach related or length related? Length related. Okay, not suspension. No, being over no, okay. no, 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 no. So purely because of the shortness of the bike. Yeah, you know, just, yeah. So just kind of like the sizing down, but everywhere else, it was a rad bike. You know, you had the benefit of the medium, a little bit smaller wheelbase too, just kind of like, nimble in through like techie rock gardens you can kind of find that little center line or that, that nimble line and you just hit it and, and you got no problems um suspension it's great it's playful snappy it's a it's a rad bike it's okay. a rad bike for sure robert what stood out to you uh obviously on the large yeah um so the pivot for an enduro bike the rear end's not super long the head angle's not super slack so i think it really uh, just gives a well-rounded sort of nature to it. It's quite a light bike overall. Um, it's nice and stiff, but not harsh with it. It, uh, yeah, just kind of does everything really well. Um, and is definitely kind of a, yeah, ma almost a master of all sort of uh, scenarios, I'd say. Absolutely, yeah, and I think, uh, remind me, 51.5 pounds, right, was the size medium that we just weighed. Um, and I think, yeah, you kind of nailed it, right? As we've been going through all 13 of these bikes, I just keep coming back to the, the master of all trades. Like this bike does a lot of stuff extremely well. There's not a lot of downsides. Um, and, uh, you know, circling back to that medium versus large video that we created, you might lose a little bit of confidence or overall speed in the most flat out high speed bits, but you made that up in the tight corners or the awkward yeah. bits of trail. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, when the clock's running, it, it almost became a wash, depending on the type of trail you're riding. Especially if you got those switchbacks, I mean, that high speed chatter and the, those trails, that might not have mattered to you. Yeah. So yeah. It, it also just kind of depends. Yeah, but, but size aside though, uh, to me, standouts are the suspension platform mm -hmm. was a really, really awesome blend of kind of, it's, I, I don't even want to say stiffness, but it was a good efficient platform. However, the shock just felt so fluttery and alive, like seating, seated climbing, um, traversing trails. Like I just felt like that shock was moving. I wasn't getting bounced all over no. through the seat. I was able to stay planted. I thought I was able to climb a lot of really technical, yeah. challenging terrain on the pivot. Um, and then when it came time to hammer, you know, over washboards or braking bumps or landing big impacts, I thought this bike really did a nice job of just kind of erasing that and smoothing it out. But it was still poppy and playful enough, which are, you know, things that we both really like out yeah. of bikes. Yeah, uh, I think for uh, the Trail 3 we were riding, like yeah. a downhill track, no, no getting away from that. This was one of the bikes that I felt the most comfortable on. Okay. And I think given that it's still so well-mannered in the less gnarly stuff, I think that really speaks to uh, how impressive it is as an all-rounder. Yeah, and I think that's that's something important to consider that you know a lot of bikes are so purposefully built and designed that they can alienate a lot of riders that you know maybe like just see the image or the, the bike and they're like, that's what I gotta have, but it's not really the best bike for their their speed, their terrain, or their skill. And I think this bike probably is gonna make the most amount of people happy, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, well, that is the Pivot Shuttle LT. Of course, 
we're gonna ask you guys to subscribe to the channel and stay tuned as we work through the rest of the reviews towards our round table and the grand finale where we say just how the pivot stacks up against all the other bikes in our shootout. Thanks again to Fox and Schwalbe for sponsoring the series. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you out on the trails.